Alright, I'm going to try to explain the basics of seismic triangulation or how seismographs are used to um, determine the epicenter of an earthquake. The first thing we should keep, keep in mind is that P waves, P waves are faster than S waves. Than S waves. Okay, so P waves faster than S waves. There should be a hyphen here. And so, um, for my example, let's say, you know, the P waves and the S waves are having a race. And we'll say that the P waves go, um, I don't know, 100 meters per second, while the S waves go only 50 meters per second, so half the speed. So here's P wave, S wave, and so for our first example, after one second, um, the P wave is here at... 100 meters, while the S wave would be here and cover only half the distance at 50 meters. All right, makes sense so far. So now, um, this is after one second. Okay, let's do one second, one second. And so now, after two seconds, uh, the P wave will have traveled twice as far. Right, 200 P wave, 200 meters and the S wave will double and that will be um, the S wave will be at 100 meters and then after three seconds three seconds let me grab another color um, after three seconds the P wave will have moved up to 300 meters Oops, 300 meters not 3000 300 meters and so the S wave will have gone 50 100 and then 150 meters. So let's take a look here. Here's the P and here's the S, S wave. So let's take a closer look here. After one second, the distance between the P wave and the S wave, the difference, uh, the P wave is ahead by 50 meters. Okay, so it's a 50 meter lead. Um, after the second second, um, the P wave and the S wave are now a hundred meters difference, right? Because the P is at 200 and the S is at 100, so the difference is 100 meters. So the P wave is increasing its lead; it's getting further and further away. And then after the third second, the P and the S wave are now even further apart, a hundred and 50 meters. So you can see that the longer the race goes on, the P wave is going to increase its lead. So it has, if, it, if it has longer to travel, the P wave, because it's faster, is going to travel um, a greater distance and increase its lead over the S wave. And that's important because when we look at the way seismographs work, um, the seismograph will receive the P wave and they'll be able to, well, let's go back here. They'll, re they'll receive the P wave and if it's a short distance between the receiving the P wave and the S wave, like this, okay, if it's only a short distance, right, they receive the P wave and then right after that, that they receive the S wave, they know that the earthquake is close by, right, it hasn't traveled very far as opposed to let's say they receive the P wave and then they have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for the S wave to come and the P wave has a long distance ahead of the S wave then we know that the distance that the P wave and S wave has traveled is pretty long so the earthquake would be far away okay hope that makes sense Right, so the further apart the waves are, indicate that the earthquake is further away. The shorter distance it is, then they know that the earthquake is closer. All right, if the P wave and the S wave come close back to back one another. All right, so now let's see, let's reduce that. Okay, let's try this. All right, now, um, so here it is. So let's say you know I'm at this seismograph and I get the P wave and the S wave and I know that it's about 300 
let's say miles away okay but the problem is it could be 300 miles in that direction it could be 300 miles in this direction it could be 300 miles in this direction so all we know is um, that it could be anywhere 300 miles from my seismograph so it could be anywhere on the perimeter of this circle so I'm kinda stuck I'm really not sure where it is I know it's 300 miles away somewhere um, so I you know I call my buddy who is also a also has a seismograph and he has the same data on the seismograph but he knows according to his calculations that this the earthquake is a certain distance away from him say maybe 500 I don't know 500 miles away okay so when we combine combine this data since I know that um, the earthquake is somewhere along my circle and he knows that the earthquake is somewhere along his circle we can just conclude that the earthquake is somewhere either here near this spot where we intersect or this place where we intersect okay so as you can imagine all we need is a third scientist with a seismograph that also um, calculated the wave and so let's say we find a nearby one and this seismograph uh, measures it out and he pinpoints his circle let's make a better, better circle he pinpoints his circle to be like so okay so I know that the earthquake is somewhere in my circle this guy knows that the earthquake is somewhere in his circle and the third seismograph realizes that the earthquake is somewhere on his circle so the solution would be that the earthquake would be where all three intersect so now we know that it would be in this point right here so this would be the epicenter okay so this is seismic triangulation and it's the use of seismographs and our knowledge of the distance away the earthquake is and but and we use the seismographs to fit pinpoint where the earthquake epicenter is and the key though is we need three um, locations of seismographs okay and again it's called triangulation all right because we need three different um, points of reception we need three different places where we can get gather data we combine that data and where our data intersects that is where the epicenter is okay this is probably my longest video um, I hope you understood it and um, thanks for watching